Last time we saw the old 350 rally engine, Nick was just about ready to move the freshly rebuilt small block over to his dyno room for final testing. Now, we stop back in for an update after he spent his whole Friday working with the Golden V8. We finished putting the whole engine together and this morning we ended up putting it on the dyno and uh, we ran it for uh, 20 minutes to uh, break in the camshaft. Did all the testing, we checked for uh, vacuum leaks, oil leaks, water leaks, everything went fine. Then my customer came in and we said, okay, let's test it for horsepower and torque. And we started getting horsepower like 350, 360, 370. But we're far away from 400. But from the factory, this thing did 310 horsepower. And there's not many modifications on this motor. We, draw, we maybe brought up the compression up a little bit, put a little cam, we did some port work, and that's about it. But we're really looking for 400 horsepower. So we tried everything we can all day. Now, after a long Friday spent working on the engine, we find Nick and the 350 still in the dyno past closing time. He's tried a big double pumper carb. He experimented with different spacers, bolted on bigger headers, but kept falling just short of his client's goal. And we're stuck with 391 horsepower and now my customer left the uh, dyno room. I guess we're giving up on it and that's it. But I asked the customer to bring in the intake manifold, the original piece, because here we got the aluminum one from Elderbrock. I needed a fitting so I could continue uh, putting the fittings on the uh, engine. He brought it in and, uh, and what a surprise. I look at this and I'm impressed. I realized that this intake manifold seems a little bit different from the Elderbrock. The carburetor seems to be sitting a little bit higher. The runners are a little bit wider. So I said, maybe this one could make the extra 10 horsepower we're looking for. So now I was thinking like, hey, let's try it on the motor. So I called my customer and I asked him, what do you think? He goes, Nick, whatever it takes to make 400 horsepower, let's give it a shot. We've done everything we can to get 400 horsepower. But after seeing that intake manifold, hmm, it looks impressive. It looks like it might do the job. I might get 10 horsepower out of it. Here it is Friday night. Everybody's gone home, clients and all, and now, I'm curious, I'm going to remove this intake manifold here tonight just to see what we got. Nick's passion for power has kept him working late plenty of times, but he's also got plenty of good people who lend a hand. Tonight it's his brother George who has stopped by after a day in the parts store and is ready to pitch in. Nick has been wrenching on engines with his brothers since before the ink was dry on his first driver's license. He's got more room in his shop now than he did back in the basement of the family home. But this is still what he loves doing best. This is really old school. This is backyard style with a key, no ratchet, no air tools, no electric tools, no nothing. Time consuming, but you know what? It still gets the job done. Back in the early 70s, this is what we did. Pretty soon, Nick has got the aluminum intake off and his hunch would seem to be confirmed. The runners are measurably larger on the original cast iron part. Here we go. We start with the other block. It's a snug fit. It fits in pretty snug tight. And now we're going to go to the cast iron. And here we go. We see almost an eighth of an inch. That's on the width. Let's try it over here. Same thing. Now let's go back to the other block. Here we go. Snug tight. Snug tight. Now let's try overall height. Here we go. Now we go for another rock. You see that? And now we go here. Again, we have almost an eighth of a gap, as you can see. We might get our goal, 10 horsepower. Might put us in the 400 range. It's promising, but Nick knows there's lots more to getting horsepower than one quick measurement. He's going to have to dyno test to see if his theory holds water. So the next morning, 
He's got Vasily bolting on the freshly cleaned, original cast iron intake manifold. Nick wants me to put the hydraulic carburetor on that intake. That intake was designed for a Rochester carburetor, which has a scoreboard flange. You see, won't the, the bolt pattern is not the same. It's a little bit off there, so we're gonna need an adapter. It's a weekend, so everything is closed. We cannot order one. But I know exactly where I can find one, so we can make the engine run today. This 72 Cuda has got a late 440 in it now. He can borrow the part he needs while this car's in the shop and order a new one on Monday. So the 440s came with a spread board intake and that's the adapter plate so we can put from spread board to square board in the Oldsmobile so we can use our Holly carburetor. Nick doesn't like the apparent restriction that this chunk of iron in the middle of the intake might cause, but he's not willing to start carving up an original piece just yet. So he leaves it as it is for the purposes of the test. Here I am, I got the cast iron inky manifold installed and I'm ready to make a test. And I hope we make the 400 horsepower and uh, let's get it started and see what we can do. wants to make a few pulls, dial in the air-fuel ratio, and find out what he's making with this setup. Okay, we're going to go up to jets. You the 12s? Yeah, I want mid 12s, high 12s, and full throttle. If we got 13.5, it's running too lean. Let's switch it up, Vasily. Change the jets, go ahead. This Olds 350 has seen a lot more testing than the average motor that Nick puts on his dyno. But he doesn't mind a bit. As long as I got the energy and my health, I can do it, and I will do it forever. Why not? I enjoy this. This is what I love. Go up uh, uh, two jets, two jets. Go so you can go down the middle. Go two more up, yeah. yeah.
the hop to 13 and we're playing. Good, that's good. Let's see what we got. Did it change anything? Back there again. I'm more stuck at 384, It's not the result Nick was hoping for. But this is why he keeps a dyno in his shop. So he can do real tests and get real answers. If this was his own motor, he'd keep trying. But it belongs to a client. And the client has already said that he's happy with the other setup. Here we are, we overlap our two tests, cast iron versus elder block. The dotted line is the elder block manifold we did uh, before. And as uh, versus the cast iron we put on today, is the solid line. So what you see here is that the elder block is the way to go. The aftermarket intake does seem to be wider open up top. And Nick would love to try modifying the original to see if he could get more air and fuel to the cylinders. But it's the client who's calling the shots on this engine. And this is as far as he wants to go, for now. days later, the 350 is still on the dyno, this time with the Edelbrock performer intake back on. It's being started up for one more pull, and there's quite the audience here to see and hear for themselves. Nick's client Tony and three generations of his family are celebrating the rebirth of the motor for a car that means a lot to all of them. That's the thing about what Nick does. He doesn't just build engines. He's building people's dreams. And this dream isn't over yet. You know Nick isn't going to be happy until he gets 400 horses out of the Rocket V8. When he does, you'll be along for the ride.